that's real. Yeah. That is You're real. not going to have joy when you choke out the spirits. Yeah. true. And then we're like, I just don't feel joyful enough to go share. Go share. You'll feel joyful. Oh, I don't feel joyful enough to go read. Go, go read. You'll feel joyful. Oh, Amen, family. Let's give it up to uh, Speedy Gonzalez Eduardo for an incredible contribution. Amen. You know, as uh, as Shauna shared, it is uh, jubilant January. Amen. And jubilant, the definition means the feeling or expression of great joy and triumph. You know, last week we talked about having a jubilant journey with Jesus. Because we don't want a boring journey with Jesus on the way to heaven. Amen. amen. You know, and I love Shauna's communion today. Not because she's just my wife. Amen. amen. But I loved it because, man, joy, the world is in such a search for joy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and joy is such a, a searched out experience yeah. in all ages. And, and you think about it growing up and you do some wild things to feel the feeling of joy. People have done some crazy things to feel joy. But last week we talked about getting excited about the righteous things, amen? And so we're going to talk about having a righteous joy today, amen? I got a couple scriptures I'm going to read to you. You can write them down, read them later, make sure it's what the Bible says, not what Preston says, amen? Amen. Psalm 96, verse 11 through 12, it says, Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad, let the sea resound, and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant. And everything in them, let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. Isaiah 55 verse 12, it says, You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Isaiah 35 verse 1 through 2. The desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice. And blossom like the crocus, too. It will burst into bloom. And it will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. And lastly, Psalm 19, verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. You know, I read these four scriptures and I go, man, it is phenomenal. The Bible says that the, the nature worships God. Wow, come on. Can you just imagine this for a second? We live in a place with a lot of nature. It's easy to end up in the woods. And can you imagine just taking a stroll through the woods and you see the trees just clapping their hands, singing to the Lord? You'd be like, man, I don't know what I just ate, but something's messed up. (laughs) You know, but can you imagine just, just walking by a mountain and hearing the mountains sing? Man, what? Is that old glory days? What is that right there? And you can just hear the nature sing and praise God. The Bible is clear that nature is joyful in their praise to God. Now, why does the nature have so much joy in their praise to God? Check out John, Job, Job, Job chapter 12. Amen. Amen. Some of us need a job, so we're going to go to the job. Job 12, verse 7. Preach, bro. The Bible says here, but ask the animals, and they will teach you. So go talk to the bird after this, all right? Or the birds of the air, and they will tell you. Or speak to the earth, and it will teach you. Or let the fish of the sea inform you. Which of these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this. You know what's incredible is that each part of the world, the creation of this world, knows that God is the creator. And so they know who to give credit to. And so the nature sings and claps its hands and praises God because it knows who created it. See, when you know your creator, you are joyful. You can be happy because you can be in his presence. And nature sings because it knows its creator. 
You know, now when you leave here, I don't want to find anybody trying to go talk to the squirrels at PSU. Amen? You want to find the most friendliest squirrels in Portland, just go to the Portland State Community or University right there. They will sit on your lap. But I don't want to hear you whispering to them and asking them, man, why do you praise God? But here, we learn nature loves God because it knows that God created it. Amen? I started to think, man, how much more for humans to have so much more joy? How much more that we should have the same joy knowing that God has created you? Each person here, God has molded. He has formed. Mm -hmm. He spent time thinking about, man, how great you're going to be, how amazing you already are. Yeah, he put muscles in your face so that you could smile. smile. You should use some of that right now. Yeah. On, bro. But he, just, he looked at you and he said, that's my child. Right. That's my child. We should have the same joy. Because we're made in the image of God. Amen. We are his creation. Turn me to 1 Chronicles 16. You now, as his creation, we should be singing praises right alongside the mountains. Right alongside the hills. As disciples, we should have the most joy in our life. Don't tell me a mountain's more fired up to praise God than you. Don't, don't tell me that squirrel's more fired up than you. But it's cold outside. Man, that thing lives outside. See, every day God has given us a reason to remember that God has created us. And so he's given us a reason to celebrate joyfully with the creator. First Chronicles 16 and verse 9, the Bible says here, sing to him, sing praise to him. Tell of all of his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Amen. You know, as you seek after God, you should be joyful. Amen. Psalm 119, 1 through 2 teaches that, hey, blessed are those who seek God with all their heart. Amen. Meaning blessed means to perfectly happy, the happiest, the highest form of happiness a human could attain. Come on. And it says, blessed are those who seek God. Yeah. Here it's teaching us that, man, joyful are those who seek his face. Yeah. But it brought me to question, man, what does bring us joy? On, what brings us, what gets us up every day? Mm. What keeps us going? What allows us to have that internal happiness and joy? Amen. Well, we're going to learn a little bit throughout the Bible. Amen? Amen. I got a couple scriptures here for you. Amen? Don't get tired of turning. On, Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. Verse 6. It says, For to us, a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Okay. Who's ever been into a room when a baby's been born? Someone in your family, maybe your own child, right? You walk in and you can't do anything but smile. You're fired up. At least for the first couple months, amen? <laughs> first couple weeks. You're smiling. Because it's a bundle of joy. That's what we call the children, a bundle of joy. Then they hit like two and you're like, ah, oh, it's a child of terror. <laughs> but they, they, they come back to becoming the bundles of joy eventually, amen? <laughs> but what's amazing is here in the Old Testament, you have this prophecy, this prediction of the Messiah. And all throughout the Old Testament, when the people heard about these prophecies of, of the Messiah to come, it would just light up the room. It would give them great joy. They got excited. Yeah. They're like, you're telling me we're going to have a Savior, a King of Israel once again? And it just brought great joy nice. as they heard about the hope of Jesus come coming to this world. Wow. Well, let's jump to when that happens in Matthew chapter 2. Amen. Come on, Preston. 
Matthew 2 and verse 10. It says that when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. You know, here the star of Jesus, they saw that, that the, the sign to prove the Messiah was born was here. And they saw it and they were overjoyed. Amen. That's like you're filled to the top with joy, but then it's over the top. Yeah. You're overjoyed. Nice. When was the last time you've been overjoyed? Nice. Good question. We find overjoy in so many things. Man, I hit snooze like five times. I felt so good. <laughs> Until you realize you're late for work. And you're overstressed, right? But we find ourselves trying to chase joy in so many silly things that will never last. And in order to, to make it last, you have to do more of it, longer of it, and, and, and get deeper in it. That's the only way it gets more joyful. Check out Luke chapter... 19. Come on. So Jesus was born here and they were overjoyed just by seeing the star. Sorry, Luke 2, before we go to Luke 19. Luke 2 and verse 10. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that there will be for all people today in all the town of David, a savior that has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. You know, when Jesus was born, it was, people were, it was such an amazing thing that people were tempted to be afraid. Amen. And he said, don't be afraid. I give you good news yeah. with great joy. Yeah. Like, in my head, I'm like, dude, I'm pretty joyful when I hear good news. But he was verifying there are some great things to be joyful about. Amen. The Messiah has been born. Oh. And so there was great joy when Jesus was born. But what about when he got older? Let's uh, look at Luke 19. This is just the intro, so bear with it. Luke 19, verse 37. It says, When he came near the place where the road goes down, the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles that had been seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. You know, the disciples are walking physically with Jesus here. And they began to joyfully break out in praise for God. They started seeing miracles. And all the miracles they were seeing, it just moved them to just praise God. It moved their hearts to be filled with joy. You know, what's incredible is that from the very beginning, from creation, joy was instilled into nature when it was created. It was instilled into you when you were created. Joy came when Jesus was prophesied about. Joy came when Jesus was born, and joy came from walking with Jesus. Amen? Amen. You know, when you're close to Jesus, you will be joyful. The title of this morning's lesson is The Joy Like Jesus. Amen. Point number one is you got to get Jesus' joy. Luke 15. What does Jesus find joy in? Luke 15. Verse 3. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and you lose one of them. Does he not leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and he goes home. Then he calls his friends and his neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Wow. Jesus finds so much joy in finding us when we're lost. He finds so much joy in finding us when we're lost. You ever experienced that? We've never experienced that. You lose your keys, and that search is not a joyful search. You can ask your spouse or your roommate. Like, man, they were ticked off. You lose your wallet or your phone, it's not a joyful search. You're not filled with joy on the journey right there. Jesus says right here on the search for the one, he is joyful. 
He's not stressed out. Jesus finds joy in the search. He finds joy in bringing back the one. He finds joy in the sermon background music. <laughs> says he finds joy when we repent. Right here it says you find joy when we repent. When we turn away from our sin in our lives, Jesus finds joy. Your repentance of your sin brings a heavenly rejoicing. Amen. Verse 8, Jesus goes on to tell another parable because he's like, they just don't get it. They, they don't understand it. Let me tell them another one. Get us right. Suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Does she not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? I know you all find sweeping joyful, right? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and her neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me! I have found my lost coin! In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Now, I know we all love cleaning, and I know that's joyful. But Jesus finds joy again over the one. Each and every single one of you. When each one of us repents, Jesus finds joy. You've given Jesus personal joy when you say, I'm no longer going to do this. I'm no longer going to act like this. I, I'm going to get over this. I'm going to get over myself and act like Jesus. And Jesus starts smiling. He's like, man, that fires me up right there. Now I started thinking, if Jesus finds joy in these things, then we should too. We should be fired up to go find the one. We should fire it up to go help the one repent. We should be joyful to repent ourselves. The Bible says that repentance brings refreshment. So you will feel refreshed when you repent. Stop waiting to feel refreshed to repent. You know, there's some of us in here that we need to just get restored in our hearts with God. God is calling you to come back to your relationship. He wants you in a real relationship. I don't, it doesn't matter because you're taking up a seat and you feel warm fuzzy today. That's great. Many billions of people go to church. That doesn't mean they have a biblical relationship with Jesus. We're not calling you to feel like, man, the guy I sit next to every Sunday is really cool, so I can't wait to go back next week. I don't know. We, we want a relationship that Jesus says, you bring me joy. You bring me joy. You know, I started to think, though, it's, it's easy to be joyful when life's easy. Yeah. You know, last, last Monday yeah. being the holiday, we, we took the kids to Defy, and uh, I brought Eli to Defy, and Defy is a kid's jungle jump. You jump on trampolines, you swing, you do everything. It's crazy. You throw balls at each other, jump into foam pits. It's, and I walked in, it was a madhouse. There was hundreds of kids. And I was like, man, they're fired up. <laughs> These kids are filled with joy. Nice. It's, it, it's hard to not be joyful at a place like that. Right. Right. It's just hard. Even like even when it, like Eli got hurt, he'd cry for a little bit, but there was so much going on. He's like, I, I can't miss out. I got to get back up. I got to go have some more fun. Yeah. And it's just, it, it's joyful. But I started to think, man, how does Jesus stay joyful when things get hard? Yeah. How does, how do we... Stay joyful when it's not going so great. Yeah. Look at Isaiah chapter 50. Anyone can relate to hard times? Yes. yes. Bigger yes than the, the good times. Sheesh. Maybe just for this week. Isaiah 50, verse 6. It says, I've offered my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. You know, this gives us a little bit of a foreshadowing of what Jesus was going to have to go through when he comes to this earth. And it says that this brutal beating that Jesus is going to have to experience. He has to go through this. And somehow he stayed joyful through it all. I go, man, how? How? 
Sometimes we get in such hard spots in our lives, we feel like, man, you, you just don't understand. You have no idea. I can't be joyful right now. And, and I, I want to remind everybody, me, you, the person next to you, we are not the, the, the example Jesus is. Right. And yeah. if he was able to be joyful through the most horrific death, the darkest times, I promise you, you can be joyful through what you're going through. That's real. That's true. That's true. I promise you. But you have to do it Jesus' way. Mm. Yeah. We all want Jesus' results, but I mean, I still want to do it my way. Oh, like, I know what Jesus says right here, but let me just try it my way. Wait, I'm not fired up. Because right. you did it your way. Yeah. Right. Stop doing it your way. Right. Come on. And you got to do it Jesus' way. Come on, bro. Look at Hebrews chapter 12. I started thinking, man, that, that's a rough scripture. If that scripture was written about me, man, I don't know if I'd be joyful. I think yeah. I'd be dreadful. And in Hebrews 12, he teaches us here in verse 2 what Jesus was focused on through it all. In verse 2, it says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. You know, it says here that Going into the cross, he was able to, through the shame, through the beatings and the blows, the harsh words, those mocking him, pulling his beard, through all the pain, he was able to see the joy that was set before him. He saw the joy of you repenting and changing your life. He saw the joy of people coming out of the darkness and into the light. He saw the joy that would come because he stayed righteous and trusting of God through his present pain. I got to ask, what is so hard in your life that causes you to stop trusting God and let go of your righteousness? What is so hard in your life that causes you to stop trusting God and let go of righteousness? I want you to think about that for a second and think about what could God do if you chose to be righteous and trusting during these hard times, yeah, yeah. during those tough moments? What could he do if you were a little less concerned about yourself and you found joy in the hope of what could and who could be transformed through you staying close to God? Jesus, through the darkest time in his life, was able to stay focused on the joy that was set before him. I started saying, man, that's tough. How do you do that? Yeah. Luke chapter 10. Come on. Luke chapter 10. Come on, Preston. Verse 21. Come on, bro. Help us out, bro. Come on. So is at that time, Jesus, full of joy. <laughs> Full of joy and through the Holy Spirit said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, and you've revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. Here it gives us the source of Jesus' joy. He says it's through the Holy Spirit that he's joyful. Now, up a few verses, it's interesting. We learn he's talking to his disciples. And he says that he's hidden these things from the wise and the learned. That's like Jesus coming and saying to us, hey, I've hidden the understanding of today's message to those who are smart. And I've given it to you. Amen. So if you're having a hard time understanding. Amen. But I started to think, man, honestly, are you, do you think too highly of yourself to learn at Jesus' feet? That's a good point. Some of us are just too smart, too wise in your own eyes to learn from Jesus. Jesus tells you to do this. You know, I don't, man, that just doesn't make sense. I don't, it doesn't feel good. I don't want to do that. And why? That's not going to bring me joy when you've been trying it your way for forever and you're still not joyful. And, and we have to have that mindset. We have to have a mindset to understand that. Here it teaches us that Jesus full of joy through the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That it was through the Holy Spirit. Jump up to verse 17. Let's go, Preston. 
He says that the 72 returned with joy. So the, his disciples came to him and they were fired up. They had joy. Nice. And he said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in our name. So they're fired up because they're like, man, demons are submitting to us, Jesus. I should be joyful right here. Look what I'm doing. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I've given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that your that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. You know what I love? Sometimes we're all like, Jesus, look, I'm fired up today because look what I did for you. I'm joyful today because look what I did this morning. And Jesus says, stop, stop. Our identity isn't in the works we do. All right, our joy isn't in our performance. Our joy is in the fact that our names are written in heaven. Come on, Pete. That's a good point, bro. That's great. That's the joy in Jesus that each of us should have. Nice. He wants you to go from being a lost sheep that he joyfully finds and that he can joyfully carry back into his kingdom. But for some of us, it's either time to repent and it's time to come back home. Or it's time to, you might be home, but you need to repent. <laughs> Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Point number two is the joy within us. Turn me to Acts chapter 8. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. In verse 26. Actually, let's just close it out here. You know, it's an incredible story. 26 to 39. The, the Ethiopian eunuch, he travels 3,000 miles to go worship outside of a temple. On his way home, he's reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. Philip comes up to him, and he's like, man, do you know what you're reading? He's like, how can I unless someone explains it to me? Starting with that very passage of scripture, he explains to him the good news about Jesus. And somewhere along that explanation, he sees a body of water in the middle of desert. And he says, there's water. What could stand in the way of me being baptized? Hey. They go down into the water. He baptizes them. And look what it ends out in verse 38. And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water. Philip baptized them. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away. And the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Amen. This eunuch was fired up. He just traveled 3,000 miles to sit outside church service. To travel back home alone, keep reading, yeah. and get baptized in some random pool of water in the desert. Yeah. That's true. That's Why would true. he be so fired up? Yeah. Well, let's look at Acts chapter 16. Maybe he's the only one. Right. Maybe he's the only guy. Random case. Let's go, Acts. Acts 16, verse 32. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and all to all the others in the house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all of his family were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God and his whole family. You know, here you have the eunuch, you have the jailer, and both are just filled with joy. What did these people have in common? They had in common that they first came to know God. They came to know Jesus. They were baptized for the forgiveness of their sins, and then they received the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit is the source of the joy. Come on, bro. Turn me to Romans chapter 8. You guys want some good stuff? Yeah, I need some great stuff. Romans chapter 8. Verse 11. And if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. Through his spirit who lives in you. So this teaches us that the same spirit that brought Jesus joy okay. is the same spirit that rose him from the dead. Okay. And it's the same spirit that lives inside of you as a baptized disciple. Amen. Why wouldn't you be joyful? What would stop you from being joyful if you have that same spirit? True. What would slow you down? What would, what would choke it out? 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says, Be joyful always, but do not quench the Spirit. Meaning you could have the Spirit living inside of you, but you can choke it out. 
You can choke it out. And you want to know, man, I don't know. Why am I not growing? Why don't I feel joyful? You choked out the spirit. I show up every week. Yeah, but you don't live it out daily. A biblical relationship with God is a daily relationship with God. Not a weekly relationship with God. And here it says, do not quench the spirit. Do not let anything steal your joy. You know, when you let the Holy Spirit move in your life, you'll always have that joy. You know, as some have shared, we had that blaze. We were pushing ourselves, share with more than ever, talk to more people than ever. And, you know, I'm impressed by what God's doing amongst our teen ministry. Amen. You know, uh, uh, Sanaya sent Shauna a really cool text message. She said, Shauna, you challenged us to share our faith. And I was scared. I was scared to share at high school. Sharing anywhere is pretty tough, but sharing in high school can be the toughest. True. You can't you can't hide from the person you just shared with ever again. Like they're you're in school for next year together, next three years. But she shared with Shauna. I pushed myself. I shared with the first person, and they were open. And the second, and the third, and now these people they they want to learn more about God's kingdom, the scriptures. And she said. I feel truly happy today from living out my purpose. Something along that line, amen? And I'm like, that's real. You're not going to have joy when you choke out the spirits. It's true. And then we're like, I just don't feel joyful enough to go share. Go share, you'll feel joyful. I don't feel joyful enough to go read. Go, go read and you'll feel joyful. Right? I loved it. We were studying the Bible with Cruz at the, at the mall. I said, Cruz, Cruz looking over there at that Jamba Juice. He said, oh, that looks good. I said, here's the deal, Cruz. I'll buy you some Jamba Juice, but you got to share with one person before we leave the mall. I said, all right, bet. We did our Bible study. I buy him Jamba Juice. And then the first person he goes and he shares his faith with it was super open, got his phone number, and he's like, man, I, I would love to come out to church with you. Let's go. You better trust Cruz was like this. <laughs> he said, I did it. Yeah. He was fired up. He was filled with joy. Yeah. You know, having joy in the Lord despite the situations, I think needs to become one of our strongest qualities. Yeah. yeah. Come on, bro. You ever been around someone and they're not doing great, or you're not doing great, and they're just joyful? Yeah. <laughs> Like, you're not doing very well, but they're fired up. And, and then you're starting to be like, dude, slow down, bro. Like, stop being so so joyful. Stop enjoying life. Let me enjoy my misery and peace. <laughs> Having joy in your life, no matter the circumstances, needs to become one of the strongest qualities as disciples. Yeah. Too often, we look for quick fixes to find that joy. Yeah. All right, bring me, bring me a Starbucks coffee and then I'll be joyful. <laughs> let, me, let me just enjoy my Netflix and I'll be really joyful. Call them out. Right? Call we find out. joy in so many things that are not everlasting. It's true. There's no sustainable joy in anything outside of Jesus. Yeah. 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 Amen. Nothing. Come you on. even try to find it so in another true. person, it won't last. Yeah. Yeah. You make another individual your God, your source of joy, it will fail. And then you're going to think it's the relationship, but really it's just you and you stopped relation, your relationship with God. When you find your relationship and your joy in Jesus, you can find joy in anything else. True. You can be in the hardest times, but man, God's good. Flat tire, I'm walking, my shoes are wet. God's good. At least I got feet. Amen. You know, family, as we close out, turn me to Revelation 2. Come on, bro. Because let me tell you guys, there is nothing worse than a stale and a joyless relationship with God. There's nothing worse than it. In Revelation 2 and verse 4, it says, Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken your first love. Remember the height from which you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent... I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. You know, this is talking about restoring that joy. And he's teaching them that you need to remember. Remember where you used to be. And then he says, repent. 
Remember that repentance brings Jesus joy and you joy. So here he says, you need to repent. Do what you did at first. Go back to how you used to be. You see, you see Christopher come out of the water? He was fired up when he got baptized right there. He was fired up. If you're feeling weak, you're missing the joy of Jesus. And our last scripture in 1 Peter 1. In verse 8. Though you have not seen him, you love him. You guys love him? I love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him. You believe in him? Yes, sir. And you are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. You don't get to see him physically anymore. You don't walk alongside him physically anymore. But you get to be filled with an inexpressible joy. A joy that is almost impossible to express excellently. Like it's so hard to explain to people. You can be filled with that. And so family, friends, I call you to go after that joy today. Get with the person that brought you out. Help, just say, help me understand that joy. Help me to learn about that joy. Let's do a Bible study. If you've lost your joy, go after restoring your relationship with God today. Restoring that joy that you had at first. Because the truth is, God, the angels, and everyone in heaven will be rejoicing when you repent. Let us have a joy like Jesus and to God. Be all the glory.